Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my presentation on natural refrigerants in all application. Is it possible? This is a co-presentation with my friend Risto from Macedonia and myself. My name is Armin Hofner. I'm a professor in refrigeration technology at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim. Welcome to this introduction talk. And the content today will be after introduction, I will explain to you how we can utilize natural working fluids in different applications. And the main working fluids I will look into are CO2, R744 carbon dioxide, ammonia, R717, hydrocarbons, water, 718, and air, 729. At the end, I will give a short conclusion so let's begin. The state of the art in many parts of the world are still F gases. And these F gases have made a severe impact on humans and our environment. This is a global issue. Still, we are facing problems with the ozone depletion. This has been, of course, mitigated with the Montreal Protocol. However, we are still seeing problems in this uh, action, but it is on the way. That's a good news. However, global warming is a quite big issue with all these fluorine substances in all the different combinations and blends. However, the acidification of our drinking water by TFA because of unsaturated HFCs and HFCs is a big challenge for our human being on earth. So, and also these poisonous decomposition products, which end up in this pear and polyfluorinated acryl substances, which we also know as forever chemicals, is a big challenge for us. So this is a big hazard to the world from our society, from the refrigeration society. So we should contribute to not destroy the planet with these kind of fluids. And we know better that we can do. And then the big question is, what are sustainable working fluids to provide clean cooling? Let's see. So the substances up to the left based on methane, that is what we are used to. You see, we had this R12, R11, R22, R32, we are still using depending on how many fluorine or chlorine are attached to the molecule based on methane. However, nowadays we are focusing much more on the propane-based refrigerants, where 121770 is representing propane, having not any fluorine, neither fluorine nor chlorine molecules or atoms on the molecule, while we don't want to have any ozone depletion. So that's why we cannot utilize these substances anyhow, because they are, have an ozone depletion. We have we are finished with that. And that's why people are looking into this one, two, three, four substances, which are defined in this direction. The more fluorine, if you substitute one of the hydrogen with the fluorine, you, you go down this line until you end up with only fluorine, the hexafluorine populate. So along, along this way, we have these substances. But are these the solution for the future? Probably not, because look, all this 1, 2, 3, 4 YF, which we all apply in the new cars, it completely transfers to HF and TFA, which accumulates in our drinking water. Not good. So this is not the solution. And the other alternative, also applied many times in chillers and other blends, is 1, 2, 3, 4, ZD. What does that do? Part of that, the 1, 2, 3, V is most likely to transfer into R23. And even if it's only 10%, which transfers into R23, it has a huge impact on the global warming. So it's not at all that sustainable that somebody would like to have it. 
And there are also other breakdown products which are not healthy at all. There is more sci scientific experiments on the way, but it should be a precaution should take, we should take care not to see that this is a long-term solution. We should do different. And it is also the diminution of this global warming potential, which is actually a challenge because it is just based on what's in the fluid, what's in the bottle in the fluid. It does not take care what is included or what happened to the impact on global warming and also environmental impacts when the fluid was produced. So it's only defined as the substances in the bottle if that is released. And if it's a short living substance, then on a hundred years perspective, which is the definition of global warming, of course, this becomes a very small number. But this does not say anything about the impact on the environment, actually. And the decomposition is very dangerous, as we all know, even when it starts to get in the fire it's even more problematic but even without the fire all this impact to the environment so that's why we should not just rely on the GWP numbers which are ultra low by definition but this is just a very narrow definition of some impact on global warming but it does not at all account for other environmental impacts so therefore we should look at at relevant natural working fluids, which can do a good job or even a better job in our sector. And as you can see, hydrocar hydrocarbons are used, ammonia, carbon dioxide, water, and air at the bottom. These substances can be used, for example, CO2 in hot water heat pumps, mobile air conditioning. If you buy a new car, electric car, you can order a CO2 heat pump system. In commercial refrigeration, I will show you later, we have a huge deployment of these kind of systems all across the world. Especially in the food industry, CO2 is very much used when it comes to very low temperature, because applications down to minus 50 are no problem, which represent a very fast and safe freezing technology for a lot of food products. And lately, heat pump chillers have been developed. They can produce chilled water and hot water up to 90 degrees at the same time. And this is also a very efficient way to and utilized in hotels and other process plants. Ammonia is one of the eldest refrigerant has been used all time in industrial refrigeration and heat pumps. But we will also see, I will show you some development towards larger, uh, smaller systems in lower charge. Hydrocarbons, we all use them in our residences. Even now you can buy a split units uh, with R290. Light commercialist has been deployed all over the world with uh, hydrocarbon in, in the bottle coolers and whatever in, in many shops. Transport refrigeration also utilizes a lot of uh, hydrocarbons, propane mainly. We see some high temperature heat pumps where we can utilize the properties of both butane and propane in a very good way. So we can achieve 120, 130 degrees C, which is necessary in some of some applications where we have to reheat very hot water to sterilize and whatever. And home appliances have been transferred to hydrocarbons many years ago. Water has been used also a very long time since a long time in industrial refrigeration and heat pumps and lately also in data center cooling. Air can be utilized for low temperature applications below minus 50 as I will show you and then it has been also utilized in airplanes and trains for air conditioning. So the example for ammonia is that this refrigerant will stay also the next 130 years or even longer because this is this is very uh, energy efficient and these systems nowadays also improve by doing a charge reduction and even improve the safety and tightness of these systems that's why we can see more and more implementation of these units for example in office buildings or as air conditioning even at airports or exhibition halls 
cooling of data center is also a wide application for this uh, refrigerant. And of course, industrial processes, cooling and heating. And it has been used even in the US for a very long time and still is in use. Here are some examples of packed uh, low charge water cooled ammonia chillers, just to give you an idea how these kind of units, how compact they can be built. On the right hand side, we even see a two stage unit for a heat pump system. So these are very nice example on low charge system. And this is another example of a charge reduction system. Where you can see that the ammonia part is in the middle of the unit, while CO2 is used to circulate it through the different evaporators, absorbing the heat, which is then recondensed in the evaporator of the ammonia system. By doing so, you can separate ammonia and food products and have a high safety in your production plant. And even the outdoor unit, they have a kind of doing a secondary loop on this part. So the amount of ammonia is rather limited. And still, this is a very energy efficient system. So why is ammonia so uh, such a good fluid? Because it's globally available. It's very inexpensive and it has a very high, one of the highest energy efficiencies when it comes to this kind of chiller applications. And when you follow the regulation and the standards, for example, EN 378, ammonia applied as a refrigerant is very safe. Most accidents actually happen when it's handled as a fertilizer. So propane was also 100 years ago, it was announced as the odorless safety refrigerant in the US. And still we are coming back now with this kind of hydrocarbon systems, which are very successful especially in Europe, but also other parts in the world. You see, we have lots of different systems, small and compact system. They can be installed indoor or outdoor, depending, <clears throat> depending on the size and the charge, of course. They are used for chilling, heating and hot water production. They have the integrated safety concepts. There are some requirements. We have to follow the standards, but then this can be very safe and the explosion protection measures are done. And then depending on the charge, you have the restrictions where you can place it. And if you are, if you are just below five kilogram and have these kind of ventilated cabinets, you can place several of these units even indoor. Outdoor, you can even have more charge. I will show you some nice examples. And here is also the, the one example from the split unit, which got the first, first time ever a split unit got the Blue Angel reward award because of the eco-friendly air conditioning with R290. So these are the large systems I would like to show you, just highlight some examples from a German installation. These are shopping mall air conditioning compressors or uh, units, condensing units, two times 1.2 megawatt with only 40 kilo of propane on the roof of this supermarket shopping mall. The left, on the right hand side, you see a slightly smaller system, but only with 12 kilo refrigerant, 600 kilowatt of cooling capacity can be provided. And now let's go to water. Water has been introduced as a refrigerant in the very, very early days of refrigeration. A guy from Scotland in the early 1980s, uh, 18th, in the 18th century, he artificially produced water ice by using an air pump system. Nowadays, we are still using, in very large process plants, we're using still water as a refrigerant in steam jet refrigeration. We also use it in the absorption refrigeration systems, but also high temperature heat pumps are nowadays again applying water because we can utilize very high supply temperatures. It just depends on the compressor technology you can nearly achieve 300 degrees C, which is very interesting in some high, high temperature heat pump applications to replace fossil fuels and provide steam or whatever with the heat pump. Here is an example for a data chiller, data cooling chiller from a supplier doing this kind of compact systems, which can be utilized. On the other hand, there is also 
you see the size and the larger sizes of this example from ELK in Dresden, which there is a one megawatt chiller unit, which are located or the, the real installations are done in several industrial applications across Europe. So this is possible. It takes a bit more space, but it is very efficient. When it comes to air, we have a, we can see these kind of systems. Uh, an example from Japan, where they store the available tuna fish at minus 60 or below, and this is very safe and natural. And the most and the most advanced uh, technology also, it does not need any heat exchanger inside or coolers inside the warehouse, which is very attractive for the operator of these systems. And these kind of systems, they do have a very high energy efficiency compared to traditional um, refrigeration vapor compression cycles at temperatures below minus 55, minus 60. So they're really energy efficient and safe. There's an example of a smaller system which you can, which is uh, lately applied to store some vaccine at very low temperatures, and it was initially designed as a cryo sauna for people having some skin problems. But these kind of systems are very efficient. They have a turbo compressors and expander units, very sophisticated, but oil-free, and as is mentioned here, they can be applied to very very low temperatures. When it comes to CO2, you have seen maybe some uh, installations already in your region. All across Europe, we have a lot of CO2 supermarkets, as I've shown on the, on the upper right hand side. I guess this number is soon approaching 50,000 because all the major supermarket chains have understood that this is the future. This gives them the highest payback time and the lowest operating costs. That's why they all shift to CO2. It's a long-term installation and a long-term long refrigerant because they know they can get this refrigerant anytime, all over the world, actually, also. On the left-hand side, I show you a heat pump chiller, which is utilizing uh, the benefit of producing hot water at high temperature lift for heat pump, but also producing chilled water at the same time. And this can be very energy efficient if you utilize both the hot and cold side at the same time, which is actually, for example, quite uh, interesting for a hotel where you need a lot of hot water, which you can store and you need chilling of the equipment rooms or kitchen or whatever. Lower left shows you a heat pump from a Danish manufacturer developed to supply heat into uh, the Danish uh, district heating grid. And they're utilizing air as a heat source and, and bring in high temperature to the grid. Even VRV systems are possible, and there are many other applications. But most successful is also a heat pump for domestic applications in Japan. There are more than 5 million CO2 heat pumps in Japan, producing the hot water for many families in Japan. And lately also we see that the car industry is moving towards CO2 and they are introducing this in their new electric cars. So this is just a summary of the examples we have just seen on the previous slide. Hot water heat pumps, industrial heat pumps, supermarkets, depending on the sophisticated systems are maybe utilized more in warmer regions, while in the Nordic countries, a very simple CO2 system has been implemented more than 10 years ago. and. All of the supermarkets uh, are now soon finished, uh, replacing all the HFC systems with alternative refrigerants, either mainly with CO2, and some do have some hydrocarbon system, but none of them is continuing with the F gases. And heat pump chillers, as I showed you, is very attractive, especially also if you have a higher temperature difference on the chilled water side, the process plant, you can utilize a very interesting two-stage ejector solution, which is very energy efficient, very promising. So, in summary, we will we see here that the, in the different columns, the alternative uh, natural working fluids, which can provide a clean heating and cooling option, and they are available wherever you see the smiley. For the domestic application, we can see the CO2 heat pumps, 
and the hydrocarbon systems are available in commercial refrigeration for the large, large distribution centers. They use ammonia else mainly CO2 and hydrocarbons. When it comes to industrial refrigeration and heat pumps, all of them are utilized except maybe air, but then water and space heat pumps are a good example for ammonia, hydrocarbons and CO2. Chillers the same and in car air conditioning we see more and more CO2 systems, but there are also some alternatives utilizing hydrocarbons. So, with this, I would answer, would like to answer the question we had in the in the beginning: Is it possible to do all this application with, with natural working fluids? The answer is yes. If you if you do it, your your customers will be very happy because they know that this is a technology they can rely on, and they can service and you can service these systems even in five or ten years because these fluids are available and it is up to us if our sector continues like with the blah 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 or if we do some action because nobody will lose a job in our sector if we implement natural working fluid of course you can continue with the hfc's blah 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 but you will be judged sooner or later that's why let's go forward look at natural working fluids as the clean cooling solution. And we can do all temperature levels and applications with these fluids. There is really no technical barrier to replace current used synthetic flooring containing refrigerants with natural working fluids. It's more about seeing the possibilities for you, your company and your end users than the ghosts when selecting the optimum refrigerant in the project or the product. But remember, of course, no single refrigerant can cover all applications. So that can be either ammonia, hydrocarbon, CO2, water, or air. However, the group of natural refrigerants I just mentioned, they can cover all the applications which can be covered by the HFCs, but they represent dirty cooling. Remember, blah, 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 this is not anymore. So, the fluorinated hydrocarbon, none of them can go as low in temperature or as high as the natural refrigerants. These fluids, they cover just the most profitable market in the middle temperature range. But when we look at this forever chemical pollution, we can see now register everywhere in the world. Our refrigeration sector has the possibilities to sparehead and complete phase out of dirty cooling. This can be our contribution to avoid that these forever chemicals are accumulating in the biosphere. And we can do this without compromising safety, food supply and human comfort, and nobody will lose the job. There is even more to do. With this, I would like to thank for your attention. If you have any questions, please get in touch with us. I wish you a nice rest of the conference and stay healthy and all the best.